I believe we are ready to start our meeting today, and I hereby call this meeting of the Resolutions Committee to order. I'm Stuart Applebaum from New York, and together with my good friends, Lottie Shackelford from Arkansas, we have the honor of serving as the co-chairs of the DNC's Resolutions Committee. I want to thank you for joining us today. It's good to be with all of you, even if we are assembling virtually. This will be the last meeting of this Resolutions Committee because at Saturday's DNC meeting, we will be voting on the appointment of the new committee members for the Resolutions Committee. I'd also like to remind you that this is an official meeting of the committee. We are live streaming these proceedings on the DNC's YouTube channel so that we can have an official record of our deliberations. And as we do at all DNC meetings, we're going to begin this meeting by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to ask you all to join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I am going to be turning the meeting over to the amazing Lottie Shackelford. Lottie? Uh, thank you so much, Stuart. And it has been just a, a joy and a pleasure to have the opportunity to co-chair resolutions with you during this election cycle. So thank you so very, very much. And it's great to see each and every one of you all on this Zoom meeting. Our first virtual resolutions meeting. Hopefully the committee's next meeting can be in person. I know we all want that. I will now recognize our party's long serving parliamentarian who, by the way, is sharing her birthday with us, Helen McFadden, to call the roll. Yeah. Ms. Bauer, is she present? Mr. Bickford? Present. Mr. Cahill? I see you. Ms. Dowdell, I have Mr. seen her. Jason and happy birthday. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Folks. Present. Ms. Fuller Clark. Mr. Harris. Present. Mr. Kaminsky. Present. Mr. King. Mr. Martinez. Here. Mr. Middleton. Here. Ms. Omara. Here. Ms. Pelosi. Present. Happy birthday. Thank you. Ms. Pooh. I don't see her. Mr. Ramirez. Present. And happy birthday. Thank you. Mr. Rigmaiden. Ms. Sanders. Mr. Smith. Here. Ms. Stino. Present. Ms. Williams. Present. Mr. Zogby. Present. And happy birthday, Helen. Yeah, appreciate it. You certainly I, have a I, quorum. Can, can I just say something? 
Um, the- <laughs> I've been uh, I've been on this committee for over 20 years, for more than two decades, and this is my last one. And I just want to thank you, Helen, because uh, you've you've taught me a lot about parliamentary procedure and how it works. I want to thank all the members of the committee that I've served with for for many many years, and um, we've. We've seen some really tough fights on everything from Iraq war to donations to uh, climate, et cetera. And it's been, uh, it's been a real experience for me. And it's one that I will cherish and long remember. And I, I, I hope that some of you feel I made as much of a contribution to you as you made to me. So thank you all very much. And, and thank you, Jim. Uh, we know Chairman. all the work you put in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you, you've got a quorum, you have 17 present, no proxies for, were filed for this meeting. And thank you, Helen, for keeping us on target. <laughs> thank you so very much. And uh, based on Helen's report, we have a quorum. Per our charter and bylaws, a quorum is constituted by 40% or 10 resolutions committee members present in person or by proxy. Now, before we get underway, I want to recognize the team who work behind the scenes to make sure our meeting runs smoothly. In addition to Helen, we're joined by the party affairs staff, Rick Boylan, Rob Engel, Liz Maripan, and others, staff and interns, as well as DNC Council, Andrea Levin, in addition, we want to thank Nick Bauer and Austin Dida in the DNC Research Department, Daniel Wessel in the DNC Communications Office, and Jeannie Daughtry in the Secretary's Office. And finally, we want to thank the technical support team who are running the Zoom meeting for us and ensuring that it is live streamed to the DNC's YouTube channel. Our sincere thanks to each and every one for helping to make sure our meeting runs smoothly. Now, if you have questions about the Resolutions Committee's work, please don't hesitate to contact our amazing team. Before we move into the business of the meeting, I want to remind you that members will be muted unless they are recognized to speak, at which point they will be introduced and unmuted by the staff. If a member would like to be recognized to make a motion, other comments, or to ask questions, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom or send a chat to Liz Maripan. Liz is the Assistant Director of the Party Affairs Office. When you raise your hand or send your chat to Liz, she will create a queue that Stuart or I can use to call on you. When it is your turn to speak, you will be announced and unmuted. We will do our best to call on everyone in the order that you seek recognition. If you have questions or comments before we get started, please submit them in the chat to Liz or raise your hand via Zoom and staff will help us make sure you are recognized. Thank you, Chair. Are Are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, we do not have any questions at this time. Thank you. So seeing no further questions, we'll move to the business at hand. Stuart. Thank you, Wadi. As you know, the Resolutions Committee receives and considers resolutions proposed by a member of the Democratic National Committee for adoption by the DNC. The Resolutions Committee then reports its recommendations to the full DNC for consideration. The Resolutions Committee normally meets twice a year during the meetings of the Democratic National Committee. Today, we have a full agenda with a total of 28 resolutions, including a number of commemorative resolutions. 
And now we're going to move to the consideration of the resolutions. Each member of the committee has received by email an agenda and the packet of the proposed resolutions. Pursuant to our bylaws, these resolutions were emailed to all DNC members in the secretary's 14 day mailing, mailing on September 23rd. We're going to consider each resolution in numeric order. And as we go through each resolution, we will show the proposed resolution on the screen. Niall Blass, who is an intern in the DNC Party Affairs Office, is going to assist us with displaying the resolutions. Doing our work in this virtual environment is going to present some new challenges for us. We're going to do our best to call on everyone in the order you seek recognition, but please be patient with us. And again, please be sure to use the raise your hand feature on Zoom or send a chat message to Liz and staff will help us make sure that you'll be recognized. And let's get started. Um, we'll start with resolution number one. Resolution number one is a resolution urging Democrats in Congress to act on legislation to protect and expand the right to vote. And I'm going to ask if there is a motion to adopt this resolution. Chairman, uh, there is a hand raise uh, to make the motion from Ron Kaminsky. Thank you, Ron. And I'm also going to ask if there is a motion to second this resolution. Chairman, uh, there is a second from member Joanne D Dodo. Great, thank you. And as we're going to do with each resolution, we're going to give an opportunity to the person who is the lead sponsor of that resolution or their designee to speak first about the resolution. And for the first resolution, we have somebody else who's also celebrating their birthday today, and that's Andre Trevor from Texas, who's going to speak to this resolution. Andre. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, to the committee for, for taking the time to consider this resolution. And um, thank you very much to my to the uh, other sponsors that have stepped up. Um, so yes, my name is Andre Triber. I uh, am a DNC member from Texas. Um, and I actually work in the Texas House where I've stepped out <laughs> right now so I can take this call before going back. And um, I work for a representative, Cheryl Cole, who is one of the members that broke quorum uh, amidst the assault on voting rights and went to Washington, D.C. And um, that, you know, that day was maybe the most proud I've ever uh, felt in my life to be a Texas Democrat, to see them standing up against this assault on our voting rights. Um, and so I wrote uh, much of what became this resolution that week. Um, and it was it was really in support on this mission uh, so that we could have national protections for our voting rights. Um, because while in Texas, we do have a lot of Texans fired up and angry and ready to hit doors this election, um, you know, as a result of many of the assaults we're seeing on our rights, um, the answer to voter suppression shouldn't be trying to out organize it. It needs to be systematically stamped out and removed from our government until all Americans have free and unfettered access to the ballot box. Uh, but, you know, y'all don't need to hear that from me. I know that we're all on the same page when it comes to voting rights uh, in this room. Um, I just appreciate that our party is stepping up and leading the charge on this. Um, and I, I love all of the congressional Democrats that have put in hours and hours and days and months uh, towards 
this goal of, of expanding our right to vote nationally. Um, so I ask for your favorable vote on this resolution. And uh, yeah, somehow, if you're still on the fence, I, you know, since it is my birthday today, I would just say it'd be really mean to not support the, you know, the resolution author on their birthday. But uh, seriously, um, it, it is a very important topic, not just for Texas, but for Georgia and, and other states across the U.S. Um, we, we, we need the help from Congress. Uh, and I appreciate y'all on the committee uh, stepping up to support this so that it's our you know, party's message that we are here for voting rights for every single American. Um, thank you again so much, very much for your time and for your service to this body serving on the committee. Thank you, Andre. Congresswoman Nakima Williams has also asked to be recognized. Thank you, Stuart, and thank you, committee members. Thank you to the authors of this resolution. As a DNC member from Georgia in the congressional seat um, succeeding Congressman John Lewis, this is something that is near and dear to my heart, and not just because I'm a Democrat through and through, because y'all, this should not be a partisan issue. But thank you for being the only party in this country that is standing up for the right to vote for everyone. And I am so grateful for the, the authors of this resolution for bringing this forward to make sure that we are living our values out loud and on purpose as a Democratic Party and standing up for the right to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Nakima. And also thank you for standing with us in Bessemer, Alabama. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this resolution? Chairman, uh, we have no further questions at this time. Great. Thank you. Is there a motion to close debate to call the question? Chairman, uh, uh, Ron, uh, I'm so sorry, Ron Kaminsky uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, Tony Coelho has raised their hand to make the second. Fine. Would all those in favor please raise their hand? Chairman. Total votes in favor are 15 hands raised. Thank you. And now we'll go to the motion itself. I would ask again that all those in favor of the motion, resolution number one, to please raise their hand on Zoom. So I think that it's all part of Chairman, we are recognizing 15 hands raised. The motion, the resolution is adopted. Thank you. Lottie. Uh, thank you, uh, Stuart. So now we will go to resolution two, uh, expressing support for President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to recommend Approval of this resolution by the DNC. Is there anyone uh, wanting to Chair make a motion? Yes, uh, we have uh, Ryan. Ryan uh, Ramirez uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Ryan. You may make the motion. Chairwoman, we can move forward with uh, seconding. Is there a motion for someone to second this motion? Chairwoman, hand raised, uh, second by also by uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Martinez. Okay, it has been moved and second to recommend approval of this recommendation. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, 
Chairwoman, at the time, uh, we have no hands raised. Seeing uh, no discussion, we will now proceed on voting on recommending the resolution as presented. Those in favor, please raise your hand using the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, uh, we have 15 hands raised. Thanks, motion. Any uh, opposers? There are none at this time. Motion carries, motion um, passed. Stewart. Thank you. The third resolution is a resolution of firm's commitment to urgent action to combat climate change and moving the country towards net zero emissions by no later than 2050. I would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. And I would ask if someone would like to raise their hand to move. Yes, uh, Chairman, we have a hand raised from uh, Christine Pelosi for the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? It is seconded by Gus Bigford. And we would like to recognize the sponsor uh, as the first speaker uh, for this resolution. Uh, we would like to recognize uh, Secretary Ray for resolution number three. Jason. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Co-Chair. On behalf of uh, Chair Harrison, myself, and the other sponsors uh, of this resolution, we just wanted to put it forward to, to make sure that we continue, you know, as we've seen the, the news across the country around the impacts that climate change is having, the devastating impacts that we as a party reaffirm, you know, our acceptance of science and that we commit to moving forward uh, to, to helping our country, our nation, and our world. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jason. Would anyone else like to discuss this resolution? Chairman, at this time, uh, there are no hands raised. Fine. Seeing that there is no further discussion, we'll go to the vote on the resolution. All those in favor, please raise your hand using the Zoom feature. Chairman, at this time, we have 15 hands raised. Is anybody opposed? If so, raise your hand. Chairman, uh, there are no hands raised, zero. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. Lottie. Thank you. Uh, now we will go to resolution number four, resolution in support of ending our 20 year military presence in Afghanistan. The chair will now entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by the DNC. If you would like to make a, uh, a motion, please raise your hand. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, Robert Martinez has raised their hand to make the motion. Uh, Mr. Martinez, you may speak. Oh, he's just, he's, he, I'm sorry. Is there um, someone to second that motion? Chairwoman, uh, Chair Steino uh, has raised their hand to uh, make the second. Great, thank you. The motion then has been moved and second. And uh, now, is there any discussion by any committee member? Chairwoman, uh, there are no hands raised uh, or messages in the chat. Well, 
Uh, seeing none, then we will proceed with the vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Or raise your hand, I'm sorry. Chairwoman, we have 15 hands raised. And those opposed, please uh, raise your hand. Zero hand, zero hands raised uh, uh, in opposition. Motion carries. Stuart. The next resolution is a resolution supporting President Biden's COVID-19 response to lead us out of the pandemic. I would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Uh, Chairman, we have uh, Tony Quello, uh, hand has raised his hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, uh, Ryan Ramirez has uh, raised their hand to make the second. Is there any discussion? Chairman, we would like to recognize uh, Secretary Ray for uh, the resolution number five. Jason. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. On behalf of myself and the other sponsors, we are pleased to present this recommendation, our resolution supporting President Biden. I think we all know how his tremendous leadership has helped lead us out of this pandemic and help us as a country uh, to begin to bounce back. And we're so grateful for that and wanted to put forward this resolution on behalf of the DNC uh, to recognize the commitment that he made to help defeat COVID and, and bring our country back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jason. Would any other committee member like to speak to this resolution? Chairman, there are no hands raised at this time. Seeing that there is no further discussion, I would ask all committee members who are in favor of this resolution to use the raise hand feature on Zoom to show your support. Chairman, we have 15 hands raised. Thank you. Is anybody opposed? Chairman, we have one opposed. Thank you. The motion is adopted. Lottie. Thank you. Now for resolution six condemning the Texas abortion law and reaffirming the party's steadfast commitment to reproductive freedom. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion to recommend approval of this resolution? Chairwoman, uh, we are recognizing Joanne Dodo uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. The motion is offered by Ms. Dodo. Is there a second? Chairwoman, the motion, uh, I'm so sorry. Chairwoman, the uh, Atima Amara has raised her hand to make the second. The motion is seconded by Ms. Amara. We have a motion and a second to, remit, to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion by any committee member? Yes, uh, we would like to recognize uh, Representative Nakima Williams uh, to uh, speak on this resolution. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the committee members for entertaining this resolution. As a member of the first majority pro-choice Congress, I am proud to submit this. We might have all got the, the alert late last night that the Texas, a federal court in Texas has now enjoined the decision in Texas. And so women can continue to receive the care that they need. But we know that this is not the end of this. And we need to continue steadfast as a party to make sure that we're standing up for people all over this country to make personal health care decisions. So thank you to the committee and everybody for sponsoring this resolution and for all of the work that we're going to continue to do to stand up for everyone in this country to make personal private decisions about their health care. Thank you, Representative Williams. Mm -hmm. 
Liz, is there anyone else uh, wanting, wishing to speak? Uh, Chairwoman, there are no hands raised at this time or uh, messages in the chat. Then we will proceed to the vote on this resolution. All in favor, please use the raise your hand feature on Zoom. Chairwoman, we have 15 hands raised. Are there any uh, expressing a no vote on this resolution? Please raise your hand. Chairwoman, we have no hands raised. The motion uh, carries and we will move to Stewart. We're now on resolution number seven, which is a resolution reaffirming the Democratic Party's commitment to equality for citizens of U.S. territories. I'll entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Chairman, Chair Steino um, has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, uh, Member Gus Bickford has raised their hand to make the second. Is there any discussion? Chairman, uh, we have a few hands raised in the queue. Uh, first, we would like to recognize uh, Casey Steino. Casey, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the committee for listening to this important resolution. Uh, as someone from Alaska, I know what it's like to be among folk who have been treated less than equal as also citizens of the United States. And I think it is important federally that members across our territories are treated equally. And with that, I would speak in support of this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, we would like to recognize next Gus Bickford. Gus. Mr. Chair, Mr. Co-Chair, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to the committee uh, for entertaining this resolution. Uh, speaking with uh, both uh, Chair Rodriguez and Benjamin, um, and especially with the population um, that we have on the East Coast and in Massachusetts, I think it's significant um, that we reaffirm our values and our support for the territories and the American citizens that live in them. And I strongly support this resolution. Thank you. Liz, is there anyone else? Chairman, uh, we have no hands raised at this time. Saying that there's no further discussion, I'd ask all those in favor to raise their hand by the hand feature on Zoom. Chairman, we have 15 hands raised. Thank you. If anybody is opposed, please use the same feature to raise your hand. Chairman, none opposed. The motion is adopted. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Lottie. Thank you, Stuart. And now we will move to resolution number eight regarding the authorized use of military force. The chair will now entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by the DNC. If you wish to make a motion, uh, please use your raise the hand feature. Chairwoman, uh, Tony Quello has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you. The motion has been offered by Mr. Coelho. Uh, is there a second? Chairwoman uh, Jim Zogby uh, has raised their hand to make the second. Mr. Zogby, Zogby has uh, seconded the motion. So now we have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion by any committee members? Chairwoman, at this time, we would like to recognize uh, Jerry Shepard uh, to speak on this resolution. Mr. Shepard, you may speak. Um, one correction, uh, Madam Chair. Ms. It is I'm sorry, Ms. Shepard, I'm sorry. 
No problem. Uh, thank you, committee, and thank you to everybody who has supported the resolution so far. I'm Jerry Shepard. I am a DNC member from Colorado. Um, this kind of hits close to home in a lot of ways. My dad was a career military guy. He was in the Army for, quote, 27 years, 9 months, and 13 days. He's likely had, he likely had PTSD since before I was born. I was the older of the two of us, me and my sister. It likely affected how we were raised, and it likely affected his quality of life. I think there are many families like mine who have had similar phenomena, including families whose loved ones didn't come back, including those the families of those who were killed in various military um, misadventures. We, the American people, are fed up with war. And I think we in the Democratic Party should stand with the rest of us who say enough is enough. We need to, um, if we're going to go to war, we need to have Congress declare war as declared in the Constitution. And I think if it were delegated to Congress as opposed to one person, we would have more deliberation. And I think we would be slower to go to war because many in Congress would understand that it would be a horrific thing to put people in harm's way, except for a very good reason. We haven't had it declared war since World War II. So I urge this committee to please adopt this elect, uh, resolution. And if you have any questions, I'll do the best I can. Also have to give uh, mad props to Christine Pelosi and her uh, suggested changes. And um, I think that they are good and strengthen the resolution. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, is there any further discussion? Chairwoman, uh, we would like to recognize uh, Christine Pelosi at this time. Okay, Ms. Pelosi. Thank you, you Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, committee members. And thank you to uh, Jerry Shepard for bringing this forward. I have um, what has become a friendly amendment that I would like to make. It's rather substantive. I had been in touch with Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who was mentioned in this resolution, and uh, together we wanted to make sure that on, uh, particularly today on the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of the beginning of the war um, in Afghanistan, that we acknowledge the language from the 2020 Democratic National Party platform that talks about not only repealing the AUMF from 2001 mentioned here, but also the AUMF from 2002, which was um, at this at the beginning of what were to become hostilities in Iraq. And so we did put forward through staff this morning a an amendment, and I wonder if they could post it. Um, while we discuss it, but I would like to make that motion that we amend this resolution to add a whereas that is lifted directly from the 2020 platform and uh, that we include in the resolved that we call upon Congress uh, to not only repeal the 2001 AUMF, but continue on the path begun in the House with a bipartisan vote and a strong statement of policy by the president to repeal the AOMF from 2002. So uh, with the specific language uh, that the staff has, I would like to amend and, and expand on this resolution. And I thank the author for her um, acceptance of this. And of course, I thank all the uh, Democrats in the House who voted to repeal the 2002 AOMF and the president for running on such a strong platform. Uh, is this what is being uh, printed on the screen? Is this the amendment being printed on the screen? No, there is a rather substantive amendment that was sent in uh, to the staff. I'm not sure. There's several copies of people who had it. I'm not sure if Sam. Um, how, how long can you uh, advise me as to how to proceed? We could we could move this if you wanted, and I could amend it and then bring it back. Madam Chairperson, I've not seen Ms. Pelosi's amendment. We could table this briefly. It appears to be an amendment to which um, there is agreement and come back after staff has had the opportunity to type it into this particular draft of the first one. 
or we can can wait for it to happen now. So I think it's your call and Ms. Pelosi's made an amendment. I'm assuming there's a second somewhere, but we need to get her second as well. Okay, uh, to proceed, then I'll ask for a second. Is Or is there a second for Ms. Pelosi's amendment? There please, are. Raise your, please raise your hand in the chat. Uh, Chairwoman, we would like to recognize. We would like to recognize uh, Nikki Mel Williams uh, to second uh, to second the motion. Okay, Ms. Williams has second this amendment, uh, the motion for the amendment. Um, so now, Madam Chairperson, the question is: Does the committee wish to table this temporarily? go on to number nine, and then when staff has had an opportunity to type in the proposed amendment, come right back to it. Do I have to have a vote on that? Can I just ask that we table this? Well, you should ask, Madam Chair, if there's any objection to doing that. Oh, okay. And if there is none, then that's Then I could, okay. Is there any objection to tabling this just to allow staff to put the language in and put it up for everyone to see and we come back to this. Chairwoman, uh, Robert Martinez has raised their hand to move this forward. Meaning what? When you say move this forward, meaning what? My apology. What Does it mean that we can table this for us and, and move on and come back to this? Chairwoman, uh, we recognize one hand in objection. Objection to moving forward? I'm, I'm, I'm not clear. Objection to the amendment? I, I don't know what this objection is for. Chairwoman, uh, please give us one moment as we... Okay. Okay. Look at the hands raised. To clarify, objecting objecting to move forward. Okay. So, but is that just the one hand? I mean, what are the other votes? There are no further objections. Chair, there are. There actually was not a motion to table. If someone wished to do that, they could make that motion and then you would vote on it. It's a non-debatable motion that is um, accepted or rejected on a majority vote. Okay. Uh, could I have a motion to table this just to allow staff the opportunity to get the language in and then we'll come right back to it? Chairwoman, uh, the motion has been made by uh, Chair Casey Steino. Thank you. Can I have a motion to second this? Chairwoman, Augusta Bickford uh, has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you, Mr. Bickford, for the seconding. Now we will move for a vote on the motion to table just momentarily until staff uh, gets the language in. Uh, are you ready to vote? Those in favor, please say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Please uh, raise your hand in the chat. Chairwoman, we have 13 hands raised. Those opposed, please raise your hand in the chat. There are no hands raised. Motion carries. So this uh, motion is tabled momentarily until staff um, gets the language ready and then we'll come back to it. Stuart? Yes, now we'll move on to resolution number nine. 
resolution expressing confidence in General Mark Milley and thanking him for his lifelong commitment to the United States of America. Would someone like to move this resolution? Chairman, Tony Coelho has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, Earl Folks has raised their hand to make the second. Is there a discussion? Chairman, uh, there are no hands raised or comments in the chat. Thank you. Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Chairman, we have 13 hands raised. All those opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Lottie. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Resolution number 10. On the upcoming report, of the Presidential Commission on the United States Supreme Court. The chair will now entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by the DNC. Liz, do we have any hands up? Chairwoman, at this time, we have no hands raised. Then this motion dies for lack of a, a motion being made, right? Yeah. Okay, Stuart. Thank you. Resolution number 11, resolution calling on Congress to act now on the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. I will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Chairman, um, we recognize uh, Tima Amara has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, we recognize Robert Martinez has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. Is there discussion? We would like to recognize Atima Amara for this resolution. Atima. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, me and a couple of co-authors, incoming uh, resolutions committee member in the next term, John Verdejo, and a fellow DNC member um, from Nevada, Allison Stevens, um, had been working on, on a resolution that we felt could, um, in the confines of the DNC, um, recognize the importance, um, though Black Lives Matter has faded from view in the national media and a lot of efforts, the importance of still ensuring that um, we are working for um, true uh, reform of our criminal justice or our criminal legal system, as well as uh, overall policing reform at a deep and a systemic level. Um, so this resolution attempts to do that. And I think it's extremely important considering we're a party that is supported and able to do a lot of the work that we're able to do because of black and brown citizens um, in our country. So thank you all for considering. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Chairman, we would like to recognize Jim Zogby. Jim. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank the, the drafters of this resolution, which I proudly endorsed. And I just have a question about procedure. Uh, this and a few other resolutions say we call on Congress. This one specifically calls on the Senate. 
Um, I had this issue several years ago and raised it. What actually do we do with these resolutions after we pass them? Uh, do they go into a book? Do they go into a deep hole? Do they, we simply read them out at a, at a meeting? Um, I would suggest that in, in the case of a few of these, this one, the, 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 the AUMF one um, in particular, that we send from the DNC um, uh, the resolution to all members of Congress and say, this is the will of the, the Democratic Party if it, if it passes. Um, people should know, members of Congress, specifically when we call on them to do something, should know that we pass it. I don't know if we already do that, but if we don't, I would urge that this resolution and others calling on Congress to do something receive uh, a, a letter or a package from the DNC saying, we wanted to inform you of these resolutions that have been passed by the Democratic National Committee, call them, uh, call them to your attention and call on you to act on them. Thank you, Jim. I can respond now or I can respond after we complete discussion. And I, maybe what I'll do is I'll see if there's anybody else who wants to speak to this resolution. Chairman, we would like to recognize Ron Harris at this time. Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Ron Harris, DNC member from Minnesota and chair of the Midwestern Caucus. Um, as somebody who uh, lives in Minneapolis, is an employee of the city of Minneapolis, I really want to thank the authors for putting this together and making sure that George Floyd's life and uh, the murder of uh, and the, the fact that his life was taken away by police isn't forgotten um, just because that we've had a little bit of distance from last summer where the entire world in many ways stood up and stood together to elevate the issues of uh, racial injustice in this country. So really appreciate the office for putting this together um, and making sure that we keep his memory alive and also make meaning of the moment that we all experienced last year. Thank you. Anybody else? Chairman, there are no hands up at this time. Great. Um, Jim, I'll comment on, on what you had to say. What happens with this resolution next is that it will be included in the um, report of the resolutions committee, which will then go to the full DNC and the full DNC will act on it. These resolutions are the um, public statements of the Democratic National Committee. And in the resolution is the, um, is the statement that we should inform either the Senate or Congress. What we will do is inf ask the staff of the DNC to inform the leadership of the DNC of your recommendations of how to deal with these resolutions. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Um, Chairman, I, I'm so sorry. We, do you have a hand up uh, from Jim Zogby? Jim. Hi, Stuart, thank you very much for that. And I, I, that is uh, exactly what I was hoping for. Um, and what I'd like to know is uh, if, if that is our recommendation to the staff, um, I, would, I would call on uh, uh, staff to report back to us that that was done uh, at, the, at the next meeting. I won't be on the committee, but I, I think it's important that we know that these things just don't go off into the ether uh, and that they actually do um, uh, reach the targeted audience. I, I, and I, I thank you for supporting that, Stuart. Uh, thank you very much. Jim, I, I would also note that we all have the ability now to inform people as well that these are the official positions Mm -hmm. of the party once they're adopted by the full DNC mm -hmm. and that we as well are able to circulate them to anybody we want. I think what I was saying though is that what we were going to do is ask the staff to um, inform the DNC leadership of your recommendations. I don't believe it's a recommendation itself mm -hmm. of this committee. but that we are suggesting or we are notifying them that a suggestion has been made. 
Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask all those in favor of this resolution to um, raise your hand. Chairman, we have 14 hands raised. All those opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. And we will also ask the staff to um, um, let the leadership of the DNC know the recommendation that came from one of the members of the committee for this and all other resolutions that um, relate to being sent to Congress. Lottie. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Uh, I want to ask staff if uh, we're ready to go back and uh, take up resolution eight and its amendment. If not, we will proceed. But before we started on the uh, uh, commemorative and uh, memorial resolutions, I was going to just try and finish the other resolutions if possible. We should be ready, yes. Um, uh, Chairwoman, uh, there we go. Okay. Chairwoman, at this time we have a hand raised uh, by Christine Pelosi. Okay. Uh, is, uh, before I call on her, is the uh, amended language the, that in green or blue? Mm -hmm. Just wanted uh, to note that for the uh, members. Yes, Chairwoman, uh, the green, uh, uh, the, the wording in green is, um, or in blue, my apologies, is the, are the edits. Okay, great. Uh, um, Christine? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, staff, for that uh, quick and expeditious work. Again, just to um, reflect on where we are, it is the 20th anniversary today of the war in Afghanistan. We have um, a strong measure here by Jerry Shepard of Colorado and, and some others to um, call upon Congress to and the authorization of the use of military force uh, from 2001. And when I discussed that with Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who is referenced in the resolution, we thought that it would be helpful to also bring up the language, excuse the blue angels overhead, the language from the, two, the 2020 platform so that we are also calling for the repeal of the 2002 AUMF. Again, so when you see this language here that's in this uh, teal uh, blue type, we, we went directly to the platform that everybody agreed on and that we ran on in 2020 that talk about um, not only ending the wars that have cost so much American blood and treasure, but applying their lessons. And I think that as, as many in the uh, Veterans and Military Families Council on which I serve and the larger community have called for um, Senator Duckworth's uh, commission on uh, the war in Afghanistan. It's really important that we have an after action review as people are questioning uh, you know, the nature of their sacrifice. It's also very important that we reiterate, uh, as uh, Ms. Shepard said earlier, the need uh, for the Democratic Party to come out strongly in favor of consulting with Congress with respect to the most solemn decision any elected official can make, which is to commit 
our blood and treasure uh, in military action. So what we added was the language from the platform, and then you'll see a paragraph regarding the House vote to repeal the 2002 AUMF and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee giving it a vote in August. You'll also see a quote uh, from the president uh, in which uh, the, the White House indicated the president's support for that repeal vote, and then are resolved rather than simply adding a number to the four uh, numeric resolves you had seen before, uh, consists of two paragraphs. The first resolved is to repeal the 2001 AUMF and the 2002 AUMF, and then the second resolve um, delves into only using force when necessary to protect our country and its people. And the objective is clear and achievable with the informed consent at lifting up of our fight against authoritarianism with clarity and purpose on behalf of human rights wherever they are under threat. And with that, I would submit it to the body and ask for its adoption. Thank you. Okay, the chair will um, entertain a motion to sure. recommend approval of the amendment to- Chairman, I'm so sorry, before we move forward, uh, we do have a hand raised by Jim Zogby. To speak before yeah. we- no, I, no, actually I would prefer to, to speak to the resolution after we've made the determination to accept or not accept the the, the amendment. Is, is it possible that Jerry Shepard accepted it as friendly? I don't know. That would make it easier. Helen, uh, my understanding when we, when we took the break, uh, we had already gone through the process and, and it was accepted that we were waiting for this language to come. So uh, Helen, am I still on the right track or not? Yes, ma'am. Robert doesn't really rec um, recognize the friendly amendment. The language is either adopted without objection or you simply vote on it. Um, the friendly amendment stuff under Robert gives two people the right to make the decision. And that's not the appropriate way to make decisions. <laughs> so I will proceed then uh, with uh, asking for a motion to approve the amendment to the resolution as just uh, read by uh, Chris, uh, Christine Pelosi. Is there someone willing to make that motion? Chairwoman, uh, we have uh, Nikima Williams has raised their hand to make the motion. Okay, thank you. And now I will uh, ask for a second to that motion. Chairwoman uh, Robert Martinez has raised their hand to second. Thank you. Now the motion to um, approve the amendment has been moved and second. Is there any discussion by committee members on the, mo the uh, motion to amend? Chairwoman, uh, we have a hand raised by Tony Quello. Uh, yes, Tony. No, no discussion. I was just moving, trying to help you out. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, we have a hand raised by Jim Zogby. Uh, thank you. I, um, um, I'm pleased that we're considering this resolution. Um, I am supportive of the way it was amended. Uh, I'm slightly concerned that the language of um, it, it remains in here about uh, continuing uh, that nothing in here would would uh, where, where does it say um, oh would have minimal impact on current military operations. Um, I, I've been troubled by the use of drones um, and their impact not only in Afghanistan but in several other countries where we do not have declared war. Uh, and the impact of drones is really quite troubling uh, because now we have them pretty soon. Everyone's going to have them. And the consequences of that uh, opening the door uh, to that kind of conflict uh, internationally, I think we're already seeing it in several places, Libya, Yemen, et cetera, uh, can be quite, uh, quite uh, difficult to bring under control. But I'm glad that we're doing it. I remember in 2002, uh, we had a fight on it. I remember trying to do a resolution in 2003, uh, early, 
uh, in our February meeting on Iraq, and uh, we would not consider it. Uh, I think it's important. Barbara Lee has been bringing this resolution to the DNC on the AUMF um, literally, I, I think, at least a half dozen times. It was submitted to the resolutions committee uh, for consideration. Um, it is about time we make clear that we want it repealed. We support the majority of Democrats in the platform that have called for it to be repealed. And a strong statement is, is in order. And I'm glad we have this resolution. I want to thank Jerry Shepard. Um, her comments were absolutely spot on. The, the issue of PTSD and what it has done to veterans um, who've been uh, involved in these conflicts uh, going on several tours of duty um, is uh, um, is a the, the hidden toll of this war, of these wars, uh, with homelessness and drugs and, and other sorts of problems that we will be living with for, for a generation. So I want to thank her and I want to thank the committee. And I really hope that we will pass this unanimously and make it clear in a statement to members of Congress that we want them to move forward expeditiously and deal with this matter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jim. Is there any further discussion? Chairwoman, there are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. We will now proceed on the vote on the amendment to the resolution. Uh, all of those in favor, please use the raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, we have 15 hands raised. Thank you. All opposed, please raise the, raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, none opposed. Thank you. The motion to amend the motion has now passed. Now we need to vote on the original um, motion to recommend the resolution. Do I have a motion to approve the amended resolution? Chairwoman, uh, Tony Coelho has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Tony. Do I have a motion to second? Uh, Chairwoman, uh, Christine Pelosi has raised their hand to, uh, to make the second. Thank you. Now we have a motion and a second to recommend approval of the amended resolution. Is there any discussion uh, by any committee member? Chairwoman, uh, there are no hands up or uh, messages in the chat at this time. Thank you. We will now proceed to the vote. Uh, those in favor of the amended resolution, please use the raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, there are 13 hands, I, my apologies, 14 hands raised. Great. Uh, if there, are there any no votes? Please, if so, please raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, none opposed. Thank you, motion carries. Now I will move to resolution 12 which is the resolution honoring the life and career of Hank Aaron. Uh, I will entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by uh, this committee. Chairwoman uh, Earl Folks has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Earl. Uh, now, could I have a motion? Uh, a to second. Chairwoman, yes, uh, Joanne Dodal um, has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you, Joanne. Now we have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution uh, honoring the life and career of Hank Aaron. 
Is there any discussion by any committee members? Chairwoman, at this time, there are no hands raised. Thank you. We will then proceed to the vote on recommending this resolution. Please use the raise the hand feature to vote yes. Chairwoman, at this time, uh, we have 13 hands raised. Thank you. If there are any no votes, please uh, use the raise the hand feature in Zoom. None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, Stuart. Thank you, Lottie. Resolution number 13. Resolution honoring the life and career of T. Wayne Bailey. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? Chairman Craig Smith has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Craig. Is there a second? Chairman Ron Kaminsky has uh, raised their hand to make the second. Thank you, Ron. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I would ask that all those in favor, Chairman, please. Chairman, yes. my apologies. Uh, we have a hand raised uh, by Judy Mount. Yes, Judy. Say hello to everybody and to the chair and the members of this great committee. Thank you to the committee and the authors for allowing me to speak on the life and career of Dr. Terrell T. Wayne Bailey, who was a mentor to so many people in the political arena here in the state of Florida. As vice chair of the Florida Democratic Party, I had the great opportunity of serving with Dr. Bailey, who was a mentor to many, many, many people, including myself. He also served in the leadership for a lot of years with the Florida Democratic Party, and he served as state committee man for many, many, many years for Volusia County. He was a delegate to the National Convention from 1972 to 2012. He served as a member, including myself. He served as a member of the Winograd Commission that developed the Democratic Party's delegate selection rules for the 1980 National Convention. On June the 29th, we lost a great Democratic fighter. He left us at the age of 86. And I would just like to say to the committee, thank you for your consideration and your time. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Chairman, there are no hands raised at this time. Saying that there's no further discussion, I'd ask all those in favor of this resolution to please raise your hand. Chairman, we have 15 hands raised. Thank you. All opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. Lottie. Uh, resolution 14, honoring the life and career of David and Joyce Dinkins. I will now entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by the DNC. Please raise uh, your hand. Uh, we would like to recognize Christine Pelosi uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Christine. And now, could I have a motion to second this resolution? 
Chairwoman Atima Amara has raised their hand to make them up the second. Thank you, Atima. Uh, we now have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this uh, resolution. Is there any discussion by any committee members? If so, please use the raise the hand feature or the chat. Chairwoman, at this time, we have no hands raised. Thank you. We will now proceed on the vote on recommending the resolution. Please use the raise the hand feature to approve this resolution. Chairwoman, we have 11 hands raised. Thank you. And please use the raise the hand feature to vote no on this resolution. Chairwoman, one opposed. Thank you. Motion carries. Stewart. Resolution 15, resolution honoring the life and career of Edwin Washington Edwards. Would someone like to move the adoption of this resolution? Chairman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman Casey Steino has raised their hand to make the second. Is there discussion? Chairman, uh, no hands are raised at this time. Thank you. All those in favor, please raise their hand. Chairman, we have 13 hands raised. All those opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed. Thank you. Lottie. Uh, resolution is 16, uh, honoring the life and career of Mike Gravel. Could I have a motion? to recommend approval of this resolution. Chairwoman uh, Casey Steino uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Co uh, Casey. Now uh, for a second of this motion. Chairwoman Earl Fowles has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you, Earl. Now that this motion has been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Chairwoman, at this time, we'd like to recognize uh, Chair Casey Steino to speak on this resolution. Uh, thank you. Casey, you may speak. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you, Co-Chair, for honoring us with this motion, with this resolution. Um, although uh, Senator Mike Gravel was actually born in my fellow member, uh, Gus Bickford State, we certainly uh, in the state of Alaska have considered him a son throughout his lifetime. Uh, in 91 years, there's a lot to, to pack in to talk about someone as uh, important as Senator Gravel. And I would again, thank the committee for our family uh, uh, giving our condolences to his family. I, I would say uh, as Speaker of the House of Alaska, he is probably most famous for speaking in the U.S. Senate and reading uh, into the record the uh, Pentagon Papers. He was uh, a staunch advocate for peace 
uh, an anti-nuclear proliferation and uh, just a great senator of the United States. So again, I, I thank you all and I thank the committee for honoring the senator and I'll be on behalf of all of Alaska as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Casey. Is there any further discussion? Chairwoman, we'd like to recognize Jim Zogby at this time. Jim, you may speak. Thank you, uh, Lottie. Listen, um, I, I changed my shirt. Um, the uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some younger folks will only remember Mike Gravel uh, with his uh, ill-fated runs for the presidency, but our generation, uh, Lottie Stewart and the rest of us will remember what an incredibly courageous man he was. What a a real stalwart in the peace movement, both against Vietnam and nuclear proliferation, as Casey noted. Um, and it's important that that record be clear, and that people remember Mike Gravel for the enormous contribution he made to peace um, at a time when there were very few folks out there willing to stand up and do what he did. And so I'm thrilled that we're doing this, and, uh, and I'm proud to support it, and I urge unanimous support. Thank you, Jim. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Chairwoman, at this time, we have no hands raised. Well, thank you. We will proceed on the vote uh, of recommending the uh, resolution. All in favor, please use the raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, we have 14 hands raised. Thank you. Those opposed, please use the raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, none opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Stuart. Resolution number 17. Resolution honoring the life and career of Representative Elsie Hastings. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? Chairman, Craig Smith has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Chairman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. Is there discussion? Chairman, we have a hand raised by Craig Smith. Craig. Yeah. Elsie Hastings was a, a force of nature down here in Florida. He belittled the arrogant, he needled the rich, and he ridiculed the stupid. So the Trump years were a very busy time for him. On election night, uh, he slipped and fell and broke his hip. And I called him and told him, and I said, you can truly say you busted your ass to beat Donald Trump. <laughs> he will be missed here. He will be missed in Congress. And uh, he's irreplaceable. And, and it's a tragedy for our state. So I urge everybody to support this resolution. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Chairman, there are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. I'm now going to proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Chairman, we have 15 uh, raised hands. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Chairman, none opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. Lottie. Thank you. Uh, resolution 18, honoring the life and career 
of James Hormel. The chair will entertain a motion to uh, recommend approval of this resolution. Chairwoman, uh, Earl Falks has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Earl. Uh, now, can I have a motion to uh, second? Chairwoman, uh, Christine Pelosi has uh, raised their hand to make the second. Thank you, uh, Christine. We have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion? Chairwoman, at this time, we'd like to recognize Earl Folks uh, to speak on this resolution. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I'm um, very pleased and honored to have this opportunity to speak to, as chair of the Democratic National Committee's LGBT Caucus, to a man who's been a very patriotic American, who's used his wealth and resources to advance the cause of LGBT equality. He was an early advocate for those suffering from HIV AIDS. He also was very generous with philanthropic efforts around the country that touched many, many lives. He was a good Democrat. He was very generous to the Democratic Party. And he was the first LGBT ambassador serving two years in Luxembourg after being appointed by President Clinton. I think that this is a man who a, was a Democrat worthy and an American worthy. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity to reflect upon this life, life of this problem, the patriotic American. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Earl. Is there any further discussion? Chairwoman, we have a hand raised by Christine Pelosi. Christine, you may speak. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm proud to join the chair. Uh, of the caucus in honoring Jim Hormel. He was a very, very, very dear friend of ours. In fact, uh, we just had a ceremony for him in San Francisco last week uh, where my mother, Nancy Pelosi, spoke uh, via video and, and eulogized him. He uh, was the chair of her first campaign for Congress and every campaign after that. And just some memories of Jim, um, for those of you um, who might not have known his story when he was nominated by President Clinton to be uh, U.S. ambassador to Luxembourg. Uh, the far right was so awful. The things that they said about him, the things that they went through every philanthropic contribution that he made, and they would go to those organizations and try to vilify them and try to get them to, to disassociate themselves from Jim. It was really uh, a terrible, terrible time. And he met it with such dignity. Um, the irony, of course, is that the um, Jesse Helms didn't want him to go to Luxembourg and kept claiming that, um, you know, you couldn't possibly have a gay man representing the United States in Luxembourg. Of course, now there's a gay man, a married gay man, as the prime minister of Luxembourg. So... History rhymes, and Jim always uh, uh, loved to talk about that. Um, also, uh, to know Jim was really to know how much he really loved people. He was so excited when he turned 70. I went to his birthday party, and I said, well, it's your new year. What is your resolution? And he, I think he might say he was going to work out more or you know, play more tennis or something. And he said, oh, I'm going to fight for marriage equality. That's what I'm going to do. And he did. And in 2013, just days after the Supreme Court legalized marriage equality, Jim Hormel and Nancy Pelosi led the Team Pelosi contingent of hundreds of people down Market Street, joyously uh, singing and enjoying the magic moment. And um, he must have had a special twinkle in his eye watching uh, from the heavens at his funeral where his uh, former wife and his widower husband together got up and read a prayer. That was the nature of Jim Hormel, bringing everybody together. We love him, we miss him, and I will send a copy of this resolution uh, to Michael, um, his beloved, and uh, thank uh, Earl, thank you again uh, for bringing this forward, and thank you, Chairwoman, for giving me a chance to honor our dear friend, uh, Jim Hormel. Thank you, Christine. Uh, is there any further discussion? Chairwoman, uh, there are no hands raised at this time. Thank you, Liz. Uh, we will now proceed on the vote. 
those in favor of this resolution, please uh, raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, there are 15 raised hands. Thank you. If there are any no votes, please uh, raise the hand feature in Zoom. None opposed. Thank you. Uh, Stuart. Thank you, Lottie. Resolution number 19 is a resolution honoring the life and career of Vernon Jordan. I'll ask for a motion to adopt this resolution. Uh, Chairman Joanne Dodo uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Chairman Nikima Williams has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. Is there a discussion? Chairman, uh, we have a hand raised by Joanne, Joanne Dodo. Joanne. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Co-Chair and Madam Co-Chair, and thank you to the committee for taking up uh, this resolution honoring the life and career of Vernon Jordan, who we all know was just a stalwart uh, civil rights leader and uh, really a giant among men in the corporate community as well. I do have a few edits that I would like to recommend for uh, this resolution and to add an, a whereas clause at the end. And how would you like me to proceed? You are proposing an amendment to this resolution. Yes, I am. So I uh, can go, go ahead. they're very small. Fine. Uh, whereas number three and whereas number five, it should say Howard University School of Law. Fine. Whereas number nine, Jordan became an unofficial advisor rather than aide to President Bill Clinton and Fine. to add an R in that last line, influencer, not influence. Good. Whereas number 10, uh, after LLC comma and was a director on numerous boards, including rather than on the board of directors of because Good. there were other boards. And then I would propose the addition of a whereas clause at the end that would read, whereas Vernon Jordan is survived by his wife of 35 years, Anne Dibble Jordan, four children and nine grandchildren. Very nice, very nice. Is there a second? Chairman uh, Earl Faust has uh, raised his hand to make the motion. Fine. Um, would you like to speak to the amendment, the proposed amendment? I had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Jordan personally and his family. And I think that what I would like to say that maybe many people didn't know is that he was a man of deep faith. And once a year, he gave the sermon at Howard University's chapel. Um, and also a very devoted husband and father and grandfather and loved getting together with his family. He was a devoted family man um always made time for anyone and you can speak to some of his mentors today uh about how special 
he always made you feel. And it didn't matter who you were, what you did. He always had time for you and made time for you. He was just an absolutely lovely man and he will be sorely missed. Um, and again, I hope that um, the committee will approve this resolution and I will be honored to share it with his family. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you, Joanne. Would anyone like to speak to the amendment? Chairman, we have a hand raised by Tony Kuala. Tony. Yes, I just want to say that Vernon uh, was a pillar uh, among those of us uh, in the political community. Uh, when I was in the Congress, he was a mentor, a great friend, someone who could make things happen, a uh, big supporter, of course, of um, uh, President Clinton, but also President Obama, uh, but a tremendous human being, and I urge support of this resolution. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, Chairman, we have no hands raised at this time. Thank you. We'll now proceed to the vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please um, raise your hand. Chairman, we have 15 raised hands. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Chairman, none opposed. Good. The amendment is adopted. Now we'll vote on the resolution as amended. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Chairman, we have 14 raised hands. Thank you. Anyone opposed, please raise your hand. Chairman, we have one opposed. Thank you. The motion is adopted. The resolution is adopted. And now um, I'll turn this over to you, Lottie. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, resolution 20, honoring the life and career of Colleen O'Kelly. The chair will now uh, entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution by the DNC. Chairwoman, uh, Tony Quello has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you, Tony. Is there a second? Chairwoman, Casey Steino has raised their hand to make the second. Uh, thank you, Casey. We have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion by committee members? Chairwoman, uh, we have a hand raised by Casey Steino. Casey, you may speak. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you to the committee for this resolution. I just wanted to say I know uh, in speaking with uh, Chairman Santos Tam, the Hawaii Democratic Party uh, will solely miss their vice chair, as we will across the West. And we are just deeply grateful for this. And uh, we give our condolences to her family, and I know that the chairman had said that aloha means a lot of things. It means hello, goodbye. It means a spirit of love, and Colleen definitely was an embodiment of that. And again, I thank you for honoring her. Thank you, uh, Casey. Are there any other discussions? Chairwoman, at this time, we'd also like to recognize uh, Chair, uh, I'm so sorry, Tyler Dos Santos, Tom. 
Aloha committee members. I'm Tyler Dos Santos Tam, chair of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. And as my counterpart in Alaska, uh, Chair Steinau mentioned, aloha means hello, it means goodbye, and most importantly, it means love. And it's those two latter meanings that we wanted to carry forward in this resolution. Colleen Kelly uh, held nearly every grassroots position imaginable up to uh, serving as vice chair of our party. And she really embodied what we as Democrats need to do on the grassroots level, reactivating our precincts. She gave tools, guidance, resources, and trainings to our district uh, officers and directors. She was an enthusiastic fundraiser, and most importantly, an eagle-eyed member of our compliance team. We really miss Colleen, and in her memory, we hope you'll join us uh, in Hawaii and all around the country in rededicating yourselves, ourselves, to supporting our grassroots Dems who really make our party work. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, any further discussion? Chairwoman, uh, there are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. Then we will proceed to the vote. Uh, those in favor of the resolution, please uh, raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, we have 15 raised hands. Thank you. Uh, those opposed to the resolution, please raise the hand feature in Zoom. Chairwoman, none opposed. Thanks. Stuart, oh, motion carries, sorry. Stuart. Thank you. Resolution 21 is a resolution honoring the life and career of Carl Levin. Is there a motion to adopt? Chairman, Tony Coelho has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman, Earl Folks has raised their hand to make the second. Is there discussion? Chairman, at this time, there are no uh, raised hands. Saying no discussion, I'd ask all those in favor of this resolution to raise their hand. Chairman, we have 14 raised hands. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Chairman, none opposed. The motion is adopted. Lottie. Thank you. Uh, resolution 22, honoring the life and career of Barbara Lubin. May I have a motion to recommend the approval of this resolution? Chairwoman, uh, Nakima Williams has raised their hand to make the motion. Uh, is there a second? Chairwoman, Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the second. A motion has been moved and second. Uh, is there any discussion? Chairwoman, there are no hands raised. We will proceed with the vote. Those in favor, please vote aye by raising the uh, hand feature. Those voting no, uh, please raise the hand feature. Chairwoman, at this time we have 14 uh, raised hands in favor. Oh, I'm sorry, I was ahead of myself. Then those uh, uh, voting no, please raise the hand feature.
None opposed. Uh, motion carries. Stewart. Thank you. Resolution 23, resolution honoring the life and career of Bob Moses. May I have a motion to adopt this resolution? Chairman uh, Atima Amara has raised their hand to make the motion. May I have a second? Chairman Nakima Williams has raised their hand to make the second. Is there a discussion? Chairman, at this time, we'd like to recognize uh, uh, Ms. Donna Brazil uh, to speak to this resolution. Donna. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Bob Moses was a giant in the civil rights movement. He was a leader of SNCC. He was an organizer. He was in the forefront of many of the voter registration campaigns uh, pre Voting Rights Act. At a time we are fighting for the John Lewis Freedom to Vote Act, it is important that we raise Bob Moses' name as someone who, along with uh, Congressman John Lewis, led this battle. We will miss him. What a huge loss to this country and to uh, those of us who believe in civil rights and uh, equal justice under the law. Uh, in his second part of his life, he started to work on the algebra project, believing that it was also important that we dig deeper into mathematics. So I want to ask the committee to support this resolution and remember Bob Moses as a giant for civil rights and equality under the law. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Chairman, uh, we have a hand raised by, oh, my apologies. Uh, no, no hands raised at this time. Saying no further discussion, I'd ask all those in favor of the resolution to raise their hand. Chairman, uh, we have 15 uh, raised hands. Thank you. The motion is adopted and I'll turn this over to Wadi. Thank you. Now for resolution 24, honoring the life and career of Gloria Richardson. Stuart, they keep the camera on you when I'm speaking. Oh, that's such a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing that for for a while now, and I know this is still going on. Um, may I have a motion to uh, approve this uh, uh, resolution? Uh, Chairwoman uh, Atima Amara has uh, raised her hand uh, to make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Chairwoman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. We now have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion by any committee member? Chairwoman, we have uh, a hand raised, uh, a few, uh, but before we begin, uh, we would like to uh, have Donna Brazil speak to this resolution. Thank you. Donna, the floor is yours. The camera person still has Stuart on. <laughs> hey, he's probably younger than I am. That's all good. Um, thank you so much. Um, yesterday, I had the great opportunity to uh, serve on a call with uh, a young lady who just wrote an amazing book about Fannie Lou Hamer. We are very... Um, I think as Democrats, we're very, uh, we're very acutely aware of the role that civil rights leaders like Gloria Richardson have played in our country and in the, in the history of our own party. She was an uncompromising uh, champion for civil rights on the Eastern shore of Maryland, Cambridge, Maryland. 
She was a strong civil rights advocate. She was influential and in, in really helping people across, uh, across this region. Um, an activist at Howard University where I'm, I'm uh, a member of, of their staff working to bring leaders and others to campus. I urge you to support this resolution to honor the memory of a great leader. Uh, and I know I speak for Yvette Lewis and the people of Maryland and so many others who uh, understood just how influential she was in helping us to usher in a new era. So I urge the adoption of this resolution in honor of Ms. Richardson, her family, and all of the great things that she did, not just in the state of Maryland, but across this country. Thank you, Donna. Uh, are there any further discussions? Yes, Chairwoman, uh, we have a question from Tony, or I'm so sorry, a hand raised by Tony Quello. Uh, Madam Tony, Chair, you may speak. Madam Chair, uh, I've been trying to get in. I, I think I made a mistake in regards to the Vernon Jordan vote. Uh, I thought I voted yes, but I think I voted no, and that would be very, very contrary to my position. If that did occur, can I ask unanimous consent to change that vote? Well, it's uh, I have an, a motion on the floor, but we can I'll bring that up as soon as Thank I get you. through this motion, Tony. I appreciate it. Tony, Thank you. Uh, uh, Tony, we will uh, uh, please know that we will make the correction on the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, our next uh, raised hand is Atima Amara. Uh, uh, Atima, you may speak. Uh, thank you for recognizing me, Madam Chair. Um, just had a question, uh, sort of procedure. We have the resolutions that are um, for Congress, and we send those to members of Congress with these resolutions honoring the life of so many important people to our party, especially in this package. Are we planning to send them to family members? Is there a plan to do anything with them specifically? Because I think it would be nice if we could send them to somebody um, related to the families. Staff, could, could you all help us out, Rick or Rob or uh, Mary Penn? Could either of you answer this question? If I could, Lottie. Yes. Uh, I would suggest that we um, also send the um, the suggestion that was made during this committee meeting that these memorial resolutions um, be sent to appropriate people, appropriate family people, just as we did earlier with um, the questions that came up. Um, Let's do it. This uh, is a that I also informed that the secretary's office often sends them to families. Okay, thank you. Are there any other discussions uh, uh, germane to Mrs. Richardson's resolution? Chairwoman, uh, we have no uh, hands raised or uh, comments in the chat. Great, thank you. Then we'll proceed to the vote. Uh, all of those in favor of this resolution, please use the raise the hand feature for yes. Chairwoman, we have 12 uh, raised hands. Thank you. Uh, those opposing please, this resolution, please use the raise hand feature. None opposed. Thank you. Motion so carries. Stuart. Thank you, Wadi. The next resolution, resolution number 25, is a resolution honoring the life and career of Adlai E. Stevenson III. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution? 
Chairman uh, Nakima Williams has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? Chairman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. Is there a discussion? Chairman, at this time, uh, there are no raised hands. Thank you. I would ask that all those in favor of this resolution, please raise their hands. Chairman, uh, there are 12 raised hands. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Uh, resolution 26, honoring the life and career of Richard Tropka. I will entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution. Chairwoman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Chairwoman Ron Harris has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. We now have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Uh, is there any discussion by committee members? Yes, Chairwoman, uh, we would like to recognize uh, Co-Chair Stuart Applebaum. Thank you. Thank you. Stuart, the floor is yours. Thank you. I, I was heartbroken when I heard about the death of Rich Trumpka just a few weeks ago. He was camping with his family at the time and suffered a heart attack. He was serving at the time as the president of the AFL-CIO, and as the head of the American labor movement, having begun his career as a coal miner like his father and his grandfather, moving to the heights of the labor movement. And he provided a voice throughout the years for all those people whose own voices went on and heard working people who struggled every day. And he was a passionate, caring voice. He was courageous and inspirational. And he mobilized workers all over this country to stand up against unjust treatment in their workplaces and in the country. He mobilized people to make their voices heard in the electoral process. And he held our elected officials accountable to the principles of the labor movement and to the principles to which the Democratic Party is supposed to stand. Um, it's His loss was... Uh, was really heartbreaking, as I said at the beginning, because I saw him not just as the strong and committed, dedicated leader of the American labor movement, but also as a friend. When I, uh, I came out late in life, and when I came out, I was apprehensive. I didn't know what was going to happen, what it was going to mean. But one of the very first calls I received was from Rich Trumpka. And the first thing he said to me was that he was proud of me. And that made all the difference in the world to me. My union at that time was not part of the AFL-CIO. He was not president of the AFL-CIO at the time. But what he said to me was so important and made such a difference. Rich Trumka was opposed to bigotry of any kind. He stood up to racism. He stood up to racism when Barack Obama got elected. 
and there are too many people who were thinking of not voting for Obama for the wrong reasons, and a speech he gave at a steel workers convention went viral. He was there to support anyone in need, anyone in need of justice. He stood with my union time and time again. When our members were on strike, when our members were trying to get a fair contract, and most recently, he was one of our most enthusiastic supporters when we have been trying to stand up to Amazon. He is going to be missed. His death came too soon. And for me, I lost a leader and I lost a friend. I hope that people take the time to read the resolution and learn more about Rich Trumka because he is now part of American history and he is now a legend for working people and for all people who care about justice. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, are there any uh, further discussions? Yes, Chairwoman. Uh, our next question is with uh, Robert Martinez. Robert, you may speak. Robert. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I had the high honor and privilege to work with what I consider one of the greatest labor leaders in U.S. history, Mr. Richard Trumka. Through good times and bad, President Trumka was responsible for leading the way and advocating for pro-worker legislation and much, much more. He dedicated his life to the working men and women of our country. Organized labor is deeply indebted to him and we thank his family. We will all miss him dearly. His legacy will live on forever. And I thank the committee for their consideration to pass this resolution. Thank you, Robert. Are, they, are there any further discussions? Uh, yes, our next question, our hand raised is uh, Tony Quello. Madam Chair, uh, I just wanted to join Stuart and Robert's comments, but I also want to point out that uh, uh, Richard was uh, a huge supporter of Democrats running for office. When I was campaign chair for uh, the Democratic House, uh, Richard was one of those who supported every move that I made in supporting and building the uh, party in the House as opposed to helping in candidates. He will truly be missed because he understood politics. He understood the need for votes and so forth. So I join overwhelmingly in support of Stewart and Robert's comments. Great. Thank you, Tony. Uh, are there any further discussions? Uh, Chairwoman, at this time, there are no hands raised. Well, thank you. We will now proceed on the vote on recommending this resolution. Those in favor, please uh, say aye by raising the hand feature. Uh, Chairwoman, there are 16 hands raised. Thank you. Those voting no, uh, please use the hand feature. Chairwoman, none opposed. Thanks. Motion carries. Stewart. Resolution number 27, resolution honoring the life and career of Cicely Tyson. I now ask for a motion to adopt this resolution. Chairman Ron Kaminsky has raised their hand to make the motion. Is there a second? 
Chairman Earl Folks has raised their hand to second. Is there any discussion? Chairman, at this time, we'd like to recognize Donna Brazil uh, to speak to this resolution. Thank you so much. And once again, I want to thank the committee for taking up this resolution. Cicely Tyson was more than an award-winning actress. She was uh, an activist. She attended our conventions. Uh, she followed through on our request whenever we called upon her to help us with public service announcements or to get uh, other uh, actors or actresses involved in some of our work. She was a proud Democrat uh, who believed in justice and equality. I went up to New York and uh, along with Mignon Moore, Yolanda Caraway and Leah Daughtry uh, to celebrate her life at Abyssinian Baptist Church. And when I got there, I looked around and there was Bill Clinton. Uh, while he wasn't on the program, Bill, Clinton couldn't hesitate to, uh, didn't hesitate to tell the story of Sicily and how much she did, not only for his administration, but how much, uh, how much time and effort she contributed to our party and to our country. So I hope you all uh, not only support this resolution, but continue to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman. We miss uh, Ms. Tyson, as we often call her. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Is there any further discussion? Chairman, at this time, there are no uh, raised hands. I would ask that all those in favor of this resolution raise their hands. Chairman, uh, we have 17 raised hands. I'd ask if anyone is opposed to this resolution that they raise their hand. None opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted and now I turn the chair over to Lottie for the final resolution of the day. Thank you, uh, Stuart. Uh, resolution 28, honoring the life and career of Martha White. Chairman. I would like to uh, entertain a motion to recommend approval of this resolution. Chairwoman, uh, we would like to recognize Ron Kaminsky uh, has raised their hand to make the motion. Ron, you may speak. Ma'am, I was just uh, raising my hand to make the motion for approval. Thank you. Chairwoman, we can move forward with the second. Is there a second? Chairwoman, uh, Nakima Williams has raised their hand to make the second. Thank you. We now have a motion and a second to recommend approval of this resolution. Is there any discussion? Chairwoman, we would like to recognize Donna Brazil to speak to this resolution. Donna, you may speak. Well, as you all know, I am very passionate about honoring those who have made a way out of nowhere, especially those who uh, made a way for me. And this was one woman from my native Louisiana who I got to meet as a college kid back at LSU almost 45 years ago. Yep, Tony Coelho, I got some years on me. Uh, Ms. White was uh, one of the leaders of the Louisiana bus boycott. Two years before Rosa Parks sat down, it was Ms. White who began the campaign in my beloved state of Louisiana and Baton Rouge. We owe it to so many who have carried us along the way. And I am grateful that the DNC is um, willing to not just lift her up, but also to remind us that we have more work to do around voting rights, equal justice under the law, and so much more. 
She wasn't afraid of bigots. She wasn't afraid to fight uh, the segregationists and even those who wanted to delay progress. And so I appreciate Ron and Atuma for your strong support. And I ask the committee to adopt this resolution. So thank you all. And as always, it's a pleasure to be a part of this committee, even if I'm on, uh, on Zoom and waiting to be seen and heard uh, like the rest of you. But I just want to say today you honored so many men and women that have been a great part of my life, including Vern Vernon Jordan. So thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, uh, Donna. Uh, I think we all, or so many of us at least, share those same uh, sentiments. Um, is there any further discussion? At this time, uh, Chairwoman, uh, there are no raised hands. Thank you, then we will proceed with the vote. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please uh, show the sign of I by raising uh, the raise hand button. Chairwoman, there are 17 raised hands. Thank you. And now for um, opposing votes, please, uh, Raise the hand button. Chairwoman, uh, none opposed. Thank you. Uh, that motion carries. And as Stuart said earlier, that was the last of the 28 resolutions this committee uh, had to deliberate with. And we thank you. We thank you so very, very much. We've completed our review of the proposed resolutions. We thank you so very much for your patience and for helping us conduct what I feel was a very successful meeting and particularly the uh, process using for our very first time Zoom. Following this meeting, staff will prepare the resolutions to be mailed to the DNC membership before Saturday's meeting. So uh, don't forget to check your emails. And as you know, members were able to submit their name to the secretary's office to sign off, uh, to sign on or as a co-sponsor of any of the resolutions that have been presented today. M members had until this meeting to uh, also I sign on as a co-sponsor for any resolutions. The names of any additional co-sponsors will be added to the resolutions sent to the membership for Saturday's meeting. Now, Stuart, uh, it's been my pleasure to chair this uh, resolutions committee with you and to the members, my, my real pleasure and my honor to serve with you and now, Stuart, you can close us out. <laughs> Thank you, Lottie. Uh, I have to say, one of the best things about being part of the Resolutions Committee for me has been getting to know Lottie Shackelford better. She is one of the uh, most extraordinary people I've met in the Democratic Party, an amazing individual. And it's, uh, I would have done this just for the opportunity to spend time with you. Um, and I want to thank the members of the committee. Um, we have one more piece of business. Um, you may have also seen that Lottie and I are proposing a bylaws amendment to clarify the resolutions process, particularly with regard to resolutions on an urgent or timely matter that could not have been submitted by the 21 day deadline. And we hope that you will support this proposed amendment. It was included in the materials you received for the Rules Committee. Um, and I want to say to you um, that both Lottie and I appreciate your time and your service on this committee for the last four years. The resolutions we adopt are important. We are defining when the party adopts resolutions, who we are as a party, what our values are, what our principles are, what we stand for. 
and it's because of those reasons that we ask people to support our party. Uh, for, we've enjoyed serving on this committee and working with each of you. We've learned a lot from you. Um, I always smiled when Donna Brazil would speak to us. And at my very first meeting of this committee eight years ago, she told us of the importance of these memorial resolutions, and she's so right on that. And I hope that the committee continues to give priority to these resolutions. And it's, I'm not going to mention anyone by name. I'm not going to mention Christine Pelosi or Jim Zogby by name, but it's been a pleasure to work with you and to learn from you and to thank you all for your commitment. Um, we have completed our business today and as such, without objection, the meeting will be adjourned. And to each of you, please stay healthy, please stay safe. And um, we'll see you all on Saturday online. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Stay safe. And. Uh,